Welcome back everyone. Come to this beautiful spot. Um, you may have seen it in a couple of videos, but I've not actually camped here. Um, got these lovely big trees and it looks out over farmland right on the edge of the woodland here. Um, I've driven in some stuff, including this, which you're probably gonna have seen in the thumbnail, but it's like a cocoon hammock chair. Um, they do them in a large size, so it's um, 180 centimeters which is about how tall I am. So let's see how this goes because I'm spending the night in it. As well as the rope that comes with the hammock itself, I've got a couple of others, uh, straps, ropes, and a throw line as well. So uh, should be okay. <laughs> Well this is the spot and uh, you can't see it but there's another branch up here that I think is the right height. Sticks out enough over, there's a proper ledge here. Well it's a ledge hill. Um, I need to be on the high point of the hill to be able to get into the hammock. Um, and I could probably tie off to the branch you can see here. I might be able to do this with just the included rope, we'll see. I guess first I've got to put it together. See? These are the individual sections which all join together with a very solid connection actually. They're kind of um, shaped so they fit in and uh, they'll make up the circle. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those and they will be very tight inside the cocoon itself and uh, then we can get it up. Here you can see the door to the hammock and the uh, framework zips in but you have got to get it in first and there's certain points you have to thread through as well like here. So the last section is the hardest to put in as you can see even tensioning them but uh, if you take this out of the pocket it goes in and in the widest part of the doorway it makes it a hell of a lot easier oh boy it's hot today I think it's a 30 degree day today um, and it's pretty humid in here, it was uh, raining last night a bit so all of that's evaporating and making it very muggy Right, I'm supposed to be able to try and get this up With all this sun, I don't know how well you can actually see this but this is my view, absolutely beautiful I love this spot Now this is probably quite hard to see but there's the drop off Here's the two trees, here's the one I'm using. Now that branch is the one I would like to hang from and that branch below it, hopefully I'll be able to tie onto it. But it is seven or eight feet up. I've just had an idea, because that's about eight feet up, it's gonna be very hard for me to get to it to tie onto it. But like I said, I did uh, drive in with my truck about 100 meters down the track there. You're not allowed to see it yet because I did a thing. So uh, it's gonna be in another video. So I should have my ladder for my roof tent in it unless I took it out to fit other stuff in. I'll have to go have a look. How handy is it to have a ladder in your truck? <laughs> All right. Get this up first.
Now I guess I've got to offer this up so I know where to tie that off before I attach this. Now I can't reach it. <laughs> what an idiot. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to pull the tent up and tie it whilst that weight's on there. See how that goes. How's that looking? <sighs> Tilts forwards a bit like that towards the door. That's just the way it is for some reason, but that'll be fine once I'm in it. I'm just gonna see if I can get in it before reinforcing my knot and then getting in it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to do this. Got some cordage with me and some spare pegs from a set I've just got knocking around. On the tent, on the tent, on the hammock, the cocoon, there are three guy out points along the ring and um, that should stop it from spinning around. So we'll see how we do with that. I don't really trust them guys out to pegs. That's quite a lot of weight and force of me getting in. Um, this one could go around the tree. The other two would probably have to go all the way down to the fence line there. I don't even know how strong that fence is, that boundary. I'll try it. I think they're all just gonna pull straight out. I'll try it with a bit more grace this time. Yeah, just have to sit down a minute and uh, take on some water. It's so hot, I really don't deal well with the heat. <laughs> Give me a cold day any day. Not too far off that. Just this kind of late Indian summer, whatever you want to call it. Whew. But uh, yeah, set up, just uh, firewood, and some food prep because what I'm having for dinner takes a lot of prep and uh, the rest is just enjoying it just figuring out where I can have a fire got a, an entrenchment shovel with me so I'll probably cut up some turf from the ground there and cover it over afterwards we'll see how that goes if there's many roots
I've got a couple of things with me to go in the hammock chair. I've got my sheepskin rug, just for a, like a ground sheet. It's pretty warm, it'll be warm enough tonight probably, but it'll just stop any chill coming up. And a uh, quilt as well, one tigress uh, hammock quilt. I thought it's just going to be the easiest thing in there. trying it again all anchored out now so it shouldn't move as much and I should stay this way facing. That's much better. Nearly forgot the lanterns. It's seriously buggy in this spot, you could probably hear them buzzing around the microphone. So I'm going to spray up. Try not to get in my mouth like last time. Quite a few bits of firewood in and around camp here. Looks like someone's had a nice meal anyway. Check this out, a friend of mine's been busy in these woods cutting up this sycamore so may as well take one and use it as a bit of a chopping block. And it's all downhill. Time to use the entrenchment tool to dig a bit of a fire pit. Oh man, it's hot. <laughs> can hear the farmer in the distance. It's a gigantic field, this. Uh, I think he's bailing up, looking at the field. I'm boiling. You could probably hear a hoverfly right over the microphone. <sighs> uh, so the fire pit's dug, just clear in the top, and uh, just got to split some wood, and then prep dinner, which I think I'm looking forward to. And 
Yeah, I should have enough wood. I nearly forgot, I've got this bike packer ground sheet by DD. It's part of their super light range. Look at that, fits in your fist basically. Um, but it's kind of a triangular shape. So I was wondering if it would go over the doorway. Um, I'm not really worried about it raining, but I've said that before. Um, it's more the bugs, not that this would probably stop them anyway. I don't know, let's look if it's even the right size. Look at that, it actually kind of fits. You could still get in and out. Might take it off for now, but I might actually put it on later. You could even use that to peg down, I guess. Not that I'm gonna. <laughs> Got some bread flour in the bowl here for stage one of dinner. Gonna add some oil to that. Didn't want to bring out butter really for this. And uh, slowly add in the water. I'm just going to start that off with a knife. Then I'm just going to start combining that with my hands and give it a need. This heat today has really made me tired. Wish I just had a steak. <laughs> but this is what I decided to do. Got the uh, canvas tent shop Dutch oven with me today. Not used it in a while. Hoping I cleaned it. Yep. I'll loosely put some uh, baking paper in here. And place in my dough. I've got some tinder card here and a lovely bed of oak. I'm going to shove in some uh, fat wood as well. Some of these twiggies on. I might use that. It's a bit of a brace. There we go. She's a hot one. So many brambles around here. I'm constantly yanking my laces out. I know I could tuck them in, but I'm stubborn. It's cooling a little bit, but uh, it's still quite hot. Sun's kind of gone round the back there now, but the fire is going. <laughs> I'm quite far from it. <laughs> it's mainly the coals I'm after today. Or isn't it always? I'm waiting for it just to die down a little bit from its initial lighting and um, I'll put the Dutch oven by it, wherever the Dutch oven is, or it's next to me, uh, just to give it a little heat, just to uh, help the proofing and uh, yeah, then get it on its way and then cool it slightly, ready for stage two. <laughs> 
Oi, oi, oi. All on a bit of a wonk here. I've uh, just tried to seal this with a little bit of cling film that I had. And that's too warm. It's doubled in size, so I'm going to put a slit in it, which uh, is usually easier said than done in a Dutch oven. It's not too bad. Uh, I might give it two because of what I'm doing. Oh dear, I need to sharpen my knives. Right, I'm gonna juggle some coals here. Pull some off to the side. Put down a trivet. Put coals on top as well. If I can get to them. I've just moved the Dutch oven off the trivet now and off the heat just to kind of bake the sides, get a little heat around the sides of it. Just remembered this is only part one of making dinner. Part two's not so much work though, hopefully. I've never actually done it before. We shall see. Be fun either way. moment of truth now. Looking good. And we are not burnt on the bottom. Ooh, hot working around that fire. While I wait for this bread to cool off before I could do the next stage, I'm going to treat myself to a beer. And I've got a neck oil. Ooh. Cheers everyone, hope you're enjoying the video, hope you're enjoying <laughs> anticipating me trying to get in the uh, hammock seat tonight, we shall see, now it's all rigged up and everything it should be okay, it's anchored, I'm looking forward to eating. I'll have to use this old Bishcraft knife to try and cut out for this cheese. So I would like to wait for this to cool down more, but time is a getting on. So let's see what we can do. Okay, will this work? Can I just pull it out? Carve some of this out a bit. <laughs> So in the camembert, gonna do a bit of a cross there. I've got some sprigs of rosemary. Just gonna tear them and put them wherever. I did think to do bacon with this, but uh, I didn't roll with the idea. Check this out, I've got cranberry sauce and the spoon doesn't even fit. <laughs> So, some of that's going to go on there as well. I was looking for cranberries, couldn't find any though. 
I've got it near the fire but not over any heat. All the heat's on top and from the sides I'll rotate it. Hopefully that'll work. More neck oil, don't mind if I do. Oh yeah. Let's have a little look. Oh my goodness. Look at that melting away. Hooey. You may hear a noise if you can. That's a tractor going through the field. But I need to get into the, oh, oh. It's so gooey. Oh. oh, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so gooey. I'm having to use the uh, cheese packaging as a bit of a plate here. Oh my goodness. Totally worth the wait. Wow. Well, here I am inside. I've put the door on, mainly to try and stop some bugs getting in. There's a lot of biteys out, but uh, I'm in. I've got my quilt and my mat. Still pretty warm, actually, to be honest. But um, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> It is so foggy. It's beautiful, but lens keeps fogging up. Can't even see that far into the woods, let alone out into the fields there. You can actually hear it dripping out of the trees where the air is just saturated. I do love a bit of fog. Um, you may have noticed I lost my shoe as I was getting out or when I got in. It's uh, rolled down the hill, I guess. So, how was it? Well, I started at one end and ended up at the other, slowly. Reset myself a couple of times. Um, I wasn't sitting very flat, which is while I was kind of slipping down and stuff. I don't think that's how I've anchored it. I think that's just how it is as a chair. I'm not sure. The more weight you put at the back, the better, but yeah. I think, if I had them, <laughs> What would be good is just to fill it full of pillows and cushions and you can kind of self-level in it, something like that. Um, that would probably work. 
but I slept, I slept, I was pretty tired. Um, yeah, woke up on and off, but did sleep. Oh dear. Condensated a little on the tarp, but otherwise was quite good. I guess the canvas absorbs it. Um, yeah, didn't really move around too much either, except when I moved. Uh, I guess no wind or anything, so no reason for it to. I need to wake up a bit. Not usually one for a, a brew as soon as I get up, but uh, I suppose I've been awake for a little while. I've been awake since a bit after five. Woke up a bit before that as well and nodded off for a minute. But uh don't know, I'm contemplating. I was so full of cheese and bread, it's very heavy. <laughs> Gave me cheesy dreams. And um, I didn't think too much about my breakfast, which is a croque monsieur. <laughs> which, as a lot of you will know, is bread and cheese. Yeah, I didn't plan that well. I just thought it'd be interesting to do. I'm actually thinking, if I eat anything at all, I might just nibble on the um, the loaf from last night, because obviously I only ate about a quarter of that. Yeah, I'm going to sit and contemplate for a minute, tidy the fire, and uh, I'll see what I'm going to do. Gonna do the reverse as before and get this uh, popped out so I can actually dismantle it. The scary bit. Oh. It's already warming up again. <laughs> right, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. I'm pretty much all packed up. Yeah, sorry to cut the video short and not do breakfast. I just haven't really got a stomach for it today. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed something a little bit different. Uh, no, I wouldn't recommend getting one of these to sleep in. Maybe nap in, but uh, no. Although I'm pretty picky with hammocks anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll uh, make my way out of this foggy forest and see you next week. Goodbye.